are the moments most of us take for granted. Time spent with family, the sound of laughter, and the love shared with those we care for most. Brian Lynn and his family now know these precious memories are all that matter. I think I, I came so close to losing it all. It just makes you appreciate every moment, every hug, and uh, I'll never take it for granted again. 43-year-old Brian Lynn is a son, uncle, husband, father of three, and local business owner. He's a University of Florida graduate and a former Marine who lives an active life. I usually try to go about twice a month. Sometimes it'll be by myself, sometimes my dad will come out with me or, or Leslie. Ten knots a win, that's good. It's fun, it's a nice break. You know, when you're, when you're running a business and it just feels like you're going 900 miles an hour, so to be able to come out here and, and go one mile an hour, that's a treat. That all changed Sunday, April 24th. Early that morning, Brian got out of bed and went to the restroom after telling his wife, Leslie, he felt sick. And as soon as I just, you know, seconds later turned the corner, I saw him laying in the hallway. Brian fell, hitting his head multiple times. And there was blood pouring out of his ear. And that was extremely shocking for me and my mom. Paramedics rushed to the Ponte Vedra home and placed Brian into an ambulance. But they quickly realized he had to be flown to UF Health Jacksonville fast. They said he was declining and he wasn't responding to any more questions and couldn't, you know, wasn't at the state he was before. Dr. David Skarupa was the attending trauma surgeon on call that morning. Over serial exams, he declined, and we mobilized multiple resources very quickly. We did identify early that he had a severe traumatic brain injury and that we needed to act fast, and we did. It's just so surreal, you know, that <laughs> you've just had a day with your family, and we were gonna go sailing that day, and and your world just stops. Faster you get them into a level one trauma center, especially when they've had such severe injuries, the quicker we can get imaging, stabilize the patient. One of the things that separates us from other centers is that we see such a high volume of high acuity and we operate and take care of these patients with such a narrow margin. It is paper thin. Yet we excel in those circumstances, and I think Brian's an example of that. Scans showed Brian had an epidural hematoma, bleeding in the brain that immediately required emergency surgery. We didn't know where he was bleeding from. He had a lot of injury to the base of his skull, so that was a concern. So it was a pretty uh, high-risk procedure in his case. Hours after the procedure, Brian wasn't improving. The bleeding didn't stop. Surgeons went in a second time to save his life. When we found out he had to do it again, it was, it was terrifying. Uh, we weren't sure just how much stress his body could, could handle. It was an hour by hour thing and you just didn't know. You know, we just, it was a waiting game. The surgery lasted hours, but this time Brian stabilized. He was placed into a medically induced coma that would last for almost two weeks. Uh, that was tough because it was just day after day after day and they were struggling. He'd, he'd just lay there and just shake, just shiver, you know. It just looked like he was, he was in a fight for his life. Nothing you can do. Brian's father spent his mornings at the hospital, only leaving to get coffee. But on May 5th, he returned to a miracle. I'll never forget it. And I rounded the corner and here's Brian, my Brian, sitting up tracking me and he's just looking at me like this and I, <laughs> I immediately broke down and go, Brian <laughs> and my dad uh, said Brian oh my god you know I, I, I can't believe you're awake and the nurse says to Brian do you know who this is and I kind of looked at her like yeah you know it's my dad <laughs> he couldn't talk but I thought he's in there this is this is my Brian you know <laughs> He, he told me about what had happened. He told me about the, um, the accident, uh, two weeks in a coma, the, the two brain surgeries. And you know, I'm listening to all this and I'm, I'm trying to 
I'm, tr I'm trying to digest it all. And it just sounds like a completely surreal story. It didn't take long for the good news to spread and for the rest of the family to flood his bedside. That was the best day of our lives. We were hugging and high-fiving and poor Brian is sitting in the bed looking at us like we're crazy people. But of course, this was the beginning of his problems. They spent the next five days working to get him strong enough to move on to the next phase of his treatment. Each day you could see him getting stronger and that was, it was just miraculous, it really was. Brian was released from the hospital on May 10th. He continued his rehabilitation at Brooks, where therapists spent hours working every day to improve his physical and cognitive skills. He went back to his business full time in November, and he is slowly working to regain his peak physical condition. Everybody did a fantastic job, and this is what we do, and we're proud to do it. It's uh, humbling and inspiring to see save a life and give, give them back to the family. And you know, it, I think it's what keeps us all motivated to do what we do. These guys are the best of the best. Like we have the best of the business overseeing his care. From yeah. Dr. Ramathula, the surgeon, Dr. Laura, his assistant, they were fabulous. Their gratitude for life continues to grow, especially for the clinicians and specialists who helped extend their time with Brian. I owe my complete recovery, I owe my existence to the people at UF Health. Um, it was their care, it was their attention to detail, their, their conscientiousness. It's not lost on me that had it not been for them, I wouldn't be here right now. Like, thank you for bringing them back home. <laughs> like, thank you so much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. You have kept this family intact. We are so indebted to you. Oh, just thank you. Yeah, there's, there are no words. There's not a moment that goes by that I don't thank um, this team and the powers that be. Whoever's up there it was looking out for Brian in a major, major way. If I live to be 100, I don't think I'll ever fully understand the reasons why you know, some people with the injury that I had can never make it back to full health, but as far as me, I mean, it's, it's as though it never happened. I mean, I'm doing everything I was doing before the accident uh, with no deterioration or degradation. Every, everything is exactly as it was before. You know, I, I have to remind myself, this actually happened because my day-to-day -day life now is just no different than it was before the accident. But extremely thankful, grateful, blessed, fortunate that the people at UF Health are as good as they are and they were able to, to bring me back to where I was before the injury.